So you want some common autistic traits you never knew were signs of autism. Okay, how about 64 of them? I've got 64 things that you didn't know were autistic traits. How many do you have? Let's go. Welcome my friend. It is so great to see you. Thank you for stopping by to watch this video. I'm Orion Kelly, that autistic guy. I'm all about helping you raise your level of understanding, acceptance, and appreciation of the autistic community. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, you're welcome to join my most amazing YouTube community. And don't forget to check out my purpose-built, dedicated video podcast YouTube channel, Orion Kelly Podcasts. Here we go, 64 things that you might not have known were signs of autism. I wonder how many will apply to you. I guess we'll find out now. Sign number one, difficulty with eye contact. Do you avoid eye contact during conversations? Do you find it hard to maintain eye contact? Understand when to use eye contact? Or does it just make you feel plain strange? Number two, trouble reading facial expressions. This could be not understanding or struggling to work out how someone's feeling based on their facial expression. Number three, sensory sensitivities. Very common as autistic people that we experience sensory sensitivities in all manner and at all extremes and levels and manifestations. It's different for everyone. Though universally, we experience them. For you, it could be certain textures, certain touches, or it could be certain sounds, certain brightnesses, certain stimuli in the environment. Sign number four, social anxiety. Do you experience social anxiety? That feeling of nervousness in social interactions? That uneasy feeling of anxiety and nervousness in social situations can be a sign of autism. Number five, literal thinking. Do you struggle to understand figurative language or things like, whoa, it's raining cats and dogs out there? This can be based on a literal thinking autistic brain, a brain that stays in the literal and logic part of our brain rather than the emotional part. Sign number six is a difficulty with abstract thinking. This can manifest in many different ways. It could be struggling to understand the concept of money or understanding the concept of time things that you could look at as abstract things. Again, attributed to that literal, logical thinking brain. Sign number seven, difficulty with transitions. And I don't mean how I edit my videos, because <laughs> so, that is a difficulty of mine. Do you get upset, have challenges, struggle with changing activities, changing routines, moving from one thing to the next? Building on that, sign number eight, difficulty with change. Whether it's anxiety or stress or just plain challenging, changes to anything can be very detrimental to your ability to regulate yourself. And more to that, unexpected change. That's a big one. Things that you weren't foreseeing, that you didn't expect to happen, to change or alter your day, not good. Number nine, do you have a need for routine? Do you feel more comfortable when you're following a set routine, a stringent plan that's carried out day after day after day? Is that something you yearn for, you thrive in? Sign number 10, difficulty with social cues. So you may struggle to understand when someone's communicating in a non-verbal way. So it could be by body language, it could be by non-verbal cues, facial expressions, those types of non-verbal communication. Number 11, difficulty with small talk. I don't have a difficulty with it, I hate it. Why do I hate it? Because I'm really bad at it, so yeah. Do you struggle to make conversation about everyday topics with just everyday people? Sign number 12, difficulty with sarcasm. Now this is a tricky one, because I find myself very naturally sarcastic, although I'm sometimes the last to understand if someone is being sarcastic to me. And I definitely experience this with my son. My autistic son doesn't know when I'm being sarcastic a lot of the time. I have to explain it to him, but it's so entrenched in my natural way of being that I do it without thinking. Nevertheless, not realizing or not always being aware when someone is being sarcastic, another sign. Added to that, sign number 13, difficulty with humor. And basically this is a challenge in understanding jokes, understanding puns, understanding people attempting humor in a way that's not obvious to you, or in fact, obvious to most people. Number 14, do you have trouble understanding or relating to other people's emotions? This is a challenge. And this is where the myth came that autistic people have no empathy. We lack empathy. That's not true. What we lack or we are challenged with 
is the ability to properly identify the emotions of others, be able to process that and convey something proportionately appropriate back to them about what we've conveyed. And that sounds very complicated. Sign number 15, difficulty with emotional regulation. Do you become easily upset, dysregulated, or overwhelmed by emotions? Sign 16, difficulty with impulse control. Acting impulsively without thinking things through, without considering the consequences, or ramifications, can be something experienced by an autistic person pretty regularly, certainly something I can struggle with. Number 17, do you have a strong interest in very specific topics? And I'm talking about almost obsessively researching, learning, coming to understand a particular topic. A topic that's taken your fancy isn't just a passing shot. It's like, okay, now I will disappear for three weeks of intensive research and I will reappear an expert on this particular topic. Back soon. Sign number 18, difficulty with executive functioning. Now this is a massive challenge for autistic people. Executive function, uneven productivity, the ability to manage time and tasks. It's a clear challenge faced by a lot of autistic people. So an example would be finding it hard to plan out tasks or projects and more generally struggling to manage your time effectively. Building on that, number 19, a difficulty prioritizing. Do you find it hard to identify what task is the most important? This is a big issue for me as an autistic person. I prioritize the task I'm doing and that's the priority. It doesn't matter if there's seven other tasks that are more important in the grand scheme of things according to my family or my wife or work or whatever. It's not how my brain looks at it. Number 20, challenges making decisions. Do you struggle making decisions? And I'm talking even about small things. Sign 21, difficulty with problem solving. For me, and in general terms for the most part, this comes down to finding it hard to solve problems independently. So without the support of others. Keeping in mind, the idea of a diagnosis of autism comes down to the premise that you have daily support needs Sure, they may be different to others. Some may have high support needs, low support needs, but they're fluid and changed by the day. The fact is, for these types of things, you require the support, the assistance of others to complete the particular task, whether it's making a decision, prioritizing, whatever it may be. Number 22, difficulty in multitasking. Even though in my mind, multitasking is a myth, a fallacy, an utter joke, you can't multitask, you can switch tasks, rant over before it even started. I guess the point is, do you struggle to do multiple things at once? Number 23, difficulty taking turns. Oh, slightly differently put, a challenge in understanding when it's your turn. Do you find yourself interrupting others and not realizing you've actually done that because you're talking, something's popped up and you've just said it and they've said, hey, you cut me off and you might not even realize that or you might have done it not wanting to offend them, but you felt like you had no other option because something's popped into your head. You, you struggle or you have a challenge remembering that it's about give and take and is it your turn, isn't it your turn? You might not wait for your turn to speak, another example. Or you might monopolize the conversation. Sign number 24, a difficulty in sharing. This is interesting. This isn't just about kids and not sharing toys, right? So for adults, autistic adults, this could manifest like you have a difficulty or you, you, you feel challenged in your want or ability to share possessions, to even share experiences. You know, I might be in the car with my family, see something out the window that's amazing and I might not even mention it to them. It doesn't occur to me, I'm just enjoying it. Should I, sh hey guys, look in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, no. You know, do you know what I mean? It's Honestly, and even as an adult, you feel like, no, I don't wanna share. This is my thing, these are my things, I don't want you to touch them. Number 25, do you have a difficulty with joint attention? Hmm, what's that? So basically it's having trouble focusing on the same thing as someone else. Number 26, a difficulty with imaginative play or role playing. As a dad, this is not my thing. Do you struggle like me to engage in imaginative play or role playing with others? I do. Number 27, it's obvious but worth noting. Do you have challenges with social activities? Now as a kid, this might be social play. As an adult, it might be social activities. In other words, do you struggle to know how you engage in social activities, in social play? You don't actually know the rules of how it all works and you don't, you're kind of, you're standing there watching. You're there, but you're not there. Sign number 28 is a difficulty with cooperative play or work. This is great for not only 
autistic kids, but autistic adults. Let's move away from play and let's take it to the adult world. Do you struggle to work together with other people? Do you struggle to work well with others? Do you hear that at work? You're great, but you just aren't a team player or don't work well with others. And this isn't a malicious thing. You know, as a rule, if you, if you are an undiagnosed autistic person, you're not doing this because you want to. You want to work well with others. You just struggle to. Number 29, do you prefer to work, rest, or play alone? Do you prefer the company of yourself? Alone time. Is that important to you in an unhealthy way? <laughs> well, maybe to them, not to me. Then, yes. <laughs> Welcome aboard, my friend. Number 30 is difficulty with self-regulation. In other words, finding it hard to control your emotions, your behaviors, the things that come inwardly and go outwardly. Sign 31 is interesting. It's a difficulty with self-awareness. Do you struggle to understand your own strengths, your own weaknesses? Do you have a blind spot, an inability to create a level of self-awareness that allows you to thrive. Adding to self-awareness, number 32, is a difficulty in self-monitoring. An example could be, do you struggle to reflect on your own behavior or actions? Number 33, low self-esteem. Bad self-esteem, no self-esteem. Do you always feel down? Do you always lack confidence? Do you always have a dim view of yourself? Sign number 34, a difficulty with self-advocacy. Now this is very different for every autistic person. Some autistic people are very good at advocating for themselves. Others struggle to communicate it in a way that other people are able to understand and help them. And others communicate in different ways that the neurotypical world refuse to understand or accept or learn. So there's many different issues here. Number 35, difficulty initiating conversations. Do you find it hard to start conversations with people, let alone continue them or finish them? Just starting them. Don't you hate starting conversations? Oh man, it stresses me out. Number 36, maintaining conversations. Do you struggle to maintain conversations? In other words, the act of keeping a conversation alive, going, is that hard? Yes, it is. And my favorite one out of this three set conversational sign, number 37, a difficulty ending conversations. Do you find it hard to work out when to end the conversation? How to end the conversation? Yeah, that's me. I'm, I'm the dude on the phone that has absolutely no idea when it's supposed to finish, how it's supposed to finish. And in my life, I don't feel like I've ever had a phone conversation end in any fashion that wasn't 100% awkward and icky and ugh. We should just make it a rule on conversations. You state what you want to state and then you leave. How could that be? Just me. Number 38, difficulty with body language. Now this is not only about struggling to read the body language of others, this is also about struggling to use body language, whether it's appropriately, correctly, or at all. Sign number 39, difficulty with tone of voice. Keep in mind my passion, my special interest, my background has been in media. So I've learnt the skills required to work in radio, TV, multimedia, whatever. Struggling with tone of voice is still a concern and an issue for me. Don't get me wrong. Like you're watching a video that's been edited and recorded. It's not normal situation here. Struggling to use tone, the correct tone, to convey what you're trying to say, what you mean, what you need, what you want, is a real challenge for autistic people. Number 40 is difficulty with inflection in your voice. Again, this is cultural. Many countries have different inflections on the words and the way they speak and talk, and that's normal, right? Wherever you may be on the planet, you're going to sound different. Cool. But it's that difficulty in varying your tone to emphasize certain words or meanings, to convey what you need to say, but not only using tone, but varying the tone. Number 41, difficulty with volume control. You don't need to tell this to my wife. <laughs> As an autistic person who has an autistic son, it's pretty much every second of the day where it's like, please don't yell, inside voice. <laughs> and this is just bottom line challenge, my friend. Speaking too loudly in general terms, speaking too softly, in general terms, without realizing it, without knowingly and willingly trying to do that. The idea that someone would go, don't yell, stop yelling. I'll go, I'm not yelling. 
I didn't realize I was yelling. I was talking, I'm, I'm getting a bit passionate and excited. I didn't know I was yelling. The idea that it's not, it doesn't even occur to me. Difficulty with pitch is another sign. And this can manifest in speaking in a monotone voice, or a seemingly robotic voice, or just with a limited range of pitch. Number 43, difficulty with intonation. So struggling to vary the pitch or speed to convey the appropriate meaning or emotion that you're trying to convey. Sign number 44, difficulty with prosody, which in effect is struggling to use the appropriate rhythm, intonation, and melody in your speech. Number 45, difficulty in articulation. This is basically struggling to make clear and distinct speech sounds. Sign number 46, a difficulty with vocabulary. Again, every autistic person is different. For some, this may manifest as having a limited vocabulary. For others, it may manifest as having a difficulty in retrieving words, word retrieval. So you know the words, you've got a vocabulary, you're just struggling to retrieve the words that you want. Therefore, that manifests to people like you don't have a good vocabulary because you don't use lots of different words. Sign number 47, difficulty with grammar. And I don't mean the parent of your parent. I mean grammar. You know, like struggling with the rules of language and structure of language. 48 is a difficulty with syntax. Do you struggle with the order and arrangement of words in a sentence? Difficulty with syntax. Number 49, a difficulty with semantics. You ever hear this? Hey, in the end, it's all semantics. Word games, words. Struggling with the meaning and interpretation of words and phrases is an example of difficulties with semantics. Sign number 50, echolalia. What? Repeating the words, phrases, sounds of others. Sounds, words, phrases you've heard from other people or other things. Sign number 51, difficulty recognizing faces. Now this has a fancy word, but when I say it, it doesn't sound so good. Don't make me say it. Please don't make me prosopagnosia. You made me say it. What is wrong with you? Number 52, a difficulty with central coherence. Hmm? Do you struggle to see the big picture? Or do you struggle to connect details into a larger context? Sign 53, intense interests. Do you find you spend the majority of your time deeply engrossed in a particular passion or a particular interest? As an autistic person, I don't really consider myself someone who has hobbies, who dabbles in things, who does activities with others on the weekends. I spend time doing my special interest, my intense interest, my passion. That's what I, and when the world gets in the way of me doing that, I'm not very happy. Number 54, sensory seeking behaviors. Do you seek out sensory inputs, whether that's taste or smell or sound or brightness? Number 55 is hyposensitivity. Do you find yourself less sensitive to certain sensory inputs? Things like pain or temperature. Number 56, lack of coordination. Are you just plain unco? Having difficulty with physical coordination and movement can be signs of an autistic person. Certainly something I experience. You can get better, but it doesn't come natural. Sign number 57, building on our last one, a difficulty with fine motor skills. This could be anything from struggling to tie your own shoelaces, to do little fidgety, small things with your fingers and hands, or Something as simple as handwriting. Have you always struggled to do handwriting in a way that's appropriate to others? Is it messy or does it make you feel weird and icky? I find if I handwrite for too long, my whole body feels really agitated. Number 58, difficulty with gross motor skills. Maybe you're one of those people that's had trouble all their life doing things like jumping, whether it's like jump rope or running, these types of gross motor skill exercises or actions or movements. Sign number 59, I can relate to this one big time, difficulty with balance. I reckon I'm, I'm stepping off a ship most of the time. I said ship. Do you struggle to maintain your balance, especially during physical activities or movements? Another sign. Number 60, difficulty with proprioception. Did I say that right? It's close enough. In other words, do you have difficulties with your spatial awareness or your body position, where you are in the world? Number 61, let's talk about that. A difficulty specifically with spatial awareness. Do you find it challenging to understand or navigate physical spaces? 
understand where you are in the physical space or navigate physical spaces. I'm always walking into door frames. It's, they haven't moved, they're always there at the same spot. <laughs> so I, or bumping into people. How is that possible? Am I trying to start a fight? No. Sign number 62, difficulty with visual processing. Do you have trouble processing or making sense of visual information? Number 63, difficulty with auditory processing. This is massive for autistic people and absolutely autistic kids. And it can really frustrate parents and teachers if they don't actually understand what's happening here. Bottom line is autistic people can absolutely struggle to process to make sense of auditory information. In other words, information that we're listening to or hearing, giving us verbal instructions might not work. We might struggle to sit in a lecture and absorb what you're telling us or get verbal commands at work or at school. That's a clear and genuine struggle. And our 64th and final thing that you may not have known was a sign of autism, is a difficulty with tactile processing. Do you find it hard or challenging to process or make sense of tactile information? As always, I'm not a healthcare practitioner. I can only provide you my own personal lived experiences as an autistic person. If this video has resonated with you, your next step would be to discuss it with your family doctor or GP. Hey, if you've liked this video, share it with your family and friends and if you have an idea for a topic you'd like me to cover in an upcoming video, well, let's see it down in the comments. Thank you so much for your support. Until my next video, thanks for watching. We'll talk soon.